Welcome to the launch of ICASA 2021. As you know, ICASA is the International Conference on HIV and STI in Africa. We are launching today the 21st edition of ICASA. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the panel of this uh, press conference. On the panel, we have uh, the president of ICASA and also the president of the Society for AIDS in Africa. The Society for AIDS in Africa is a co-student of ICASA. And I'm honored to introduce to you Professor John Idoko, who is the president of ICASA and also the president of Society for AIDS in Africa. The second panelist is the chair, the president of the scientific committee, Professor Xavier, François Xavier, who is the second panelist. We have the third panelist also, who is uh, the chair, the president of the committee, the, the leadership committee, Dr. Parry. Honorable Paris from Zimbabwe. And the fourth one is Dr. Dauda, who is the chair of the community program. Unfortunately, Mr. Dauda is not here. Then we can start uh, the press uh, conference. But before then, we, we appreciate that uh, the journalist that is on this panel should present herself. Then the president will take over. Can we start from Madam Jocelyn? Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Bonjour. Je suis Jocelyne Douyoumouliom, journaliste à Cameroun Tribune. C'est la le quotidien gouvernemental bilingue d'information générale. Je suis heureuse d'accompagner l'ICASA pour l'édition 2021. C'est un plaisir de vous avoir. Merci. Merci. marie Raphaël. Bonjour. Bonjour, Marie. Je suis marie Raphaël, la journaliste pour Africa 24 et je suis fière d'être là. Et j'espère pouvoir tirer le maximum de cette conférence. Merci bien, vous êtes la bienvenue Marie-Raphaël. Merci. J'ai le plaisir de vous introduire encore les panélistes en français. Nous avons le Même président de la SA et aussi le président de, de la conférence panafricaine, le professeur John Idoko. Nous avons aussi le président du comité scientifique le professeur François Xavier. Nous avons le président du comité du leadership, Dr. Paris du Zimbabwe. Ceci dit, je vais introduire pour que le président puisse faire une petite allocution avant que la, presse, la conférence de presse ne commence. Mr. Chair. Euh... Euh, Luc, yes, sir. Euh, avant que, que le président ne prenne la parole, il y a en ligne Equinox. Equinox, on ne l'a pas vu. Il est en ligne, là. Il est en ligne C'est Greg Noufelé. Il est ah, en ligne. Ah, c'est Greg I don't see all the le, le plantateur d'Equinox, oui. Ok. Excusez-moi beaucoup. Mr. Sethi, please, can you introduce yourself Allô Monsieur Cédric. Oui, est-ce que vous m'entendez Oui, on vous reçoit très bien. Alors, c'est un plaisir d'être là pour suivre la conférence. La, la thématique est très intéressante. Nous espérons que nous serons... ...assez édifiés sur... Ok. Je ne sais pas. Dommage, il y a quelques coupures, la, la, la collection n'est pas... Oui, oui, je crois qu'il y a un problème de réseau. Oh. Il y a un problème de réseau. Vous pouvez me mettre dans une position qui me permettra de suivre mieux, euh, de pouvoir mieux vous recevoir. Mais je vous reçois 5 sur 5. OK, merci bien. 
On souhaiterait aussi que Dr. Jack puisse se présenter. Allô, Dr. Jack, are you there? Jack Shola? Yeah, I'm here. Please, can you present yourself, please? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Hello, Dr. Jack, can you present yourself, please? Yes, uh, you mean I put on my mic? Yes, please. My mic is on, unless you mean uh, the camera. Yes, present, just present yourself. Go ahead. Introduce yourself. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, uh, hi, everybody. My, na my name is Jack, and um, I'm, uh, I'm a political scientist by training, and I focus on health policy and public opinion about health policy in Southern Africa. SADIC is my uh, press speciality. Nice to meet you all. Nice to be here. The pleasure of having you on board, Dr. Jack. Mr. Chair, if you allow me, can you give us your speech, introduction speech, so that we can start this uh, press conference, the first press conference for Ikata Thank you very much, Luke. Luke, thank you very much. Welcome, Shall sir. I start by saying good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone, wherever you are. Uh, I, I want to welcome everyone, I particularly want to welcome and thank uh, the CASA director who has really taken us through uh, those momentous meetings that uh, culminated in uh, the press conference of today. I thank the various uh, committee chairs, the scientific, the leadership, and the community uh, because they worked tirelessly to be able to get us uh, not only the team, but also the objectives. And of course, I thank all the gentlemen of the press uh, who have come to uh, pa participate in this uh, very important conference. And I welcome all our other members, not only the steering committee members, but other members of, uh, of the Society for AIDS in Africa who have joined us this, uh, this day on this conference. I think that I'd like to start from the last uh, ICASA, ICASA 2020, which happened in Kigali. And most of you who were there or who followed the trends then saw how successful it was. Very, very compact and solid science and was pretty well attended. We had like 8,500 uh, participants in that meeting. But very importantly, there were a lot of very good take homes to see how we can improve on what we're doing. Not only in the area of HIV AIDS, but related you know, diseases, uh, both commodities and associated diseases like TB, HIV, I mean, um, hepatitis. And we even talked on, the, on, on new and emerging diseases. So we intend this year to build on that, uh, despite the shortcomings that we have from the COVID infection. I'm pretty confident that we will do much better this year. And uh, the... Uh, we have seen from what we have done with our first steering committee, that even with a virtual platform, that we we'll have been able to achieve a lot. So we have before us, after about two or three very important virtual meetings, the theme for uh, this uh, coming in CASA, which, is, uh, um, which has been, uh, 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 has come in a year that is really very, very interesting and intriguing. Uh, with COVID that has impacted on every aspect of our lives, both the health, the social and economic aspects of our life, but more importantly, has brought a new, pandem a new pandemic that we are, put, we are battling with. Uh, and also has forced us from our face-to-face -face meeting of steering committee meetings to, to virtual meetings. So this is really a very unique year. Having said that, I am sure that despite all the shortcomings that we have had and the impact that the COVID has had, we've been able to put together a very sound theme for this uh, next conference, which hopefully, which we are now, we now have, after it, some kind of issues, we now are sure that we can, that we take place in Durban, in, in South Africa. Uh, the theme for, an, for the next uh, ICASA in 2021 is Africa AIDS response the race to 2030, evidence, scale up, 
and accelerate. And if you look at this, it's really like a strategic vision. We all know that we want to end this in 2030. And therefore, we're looking at it, we want to look at where we are, we want to look at the gaps we have, and then using those gaps to accelerate and scale up to a situation where we know that uh, our problem with AIDS will have really, really, uh, you know, uh, been, uh, uh, been, been sorted out, or we would have defeated it by 2030. I know we have all, in our various countries, we have gaps, but this is the reason why we are having this. But more importantly, there is no way a conference like this can go on now without looking at the, at the um, effects of COVID. COVID has impacted not only HIV, but all other diseases. And it has brought its, uh, its own problems. And we need solutions to all this. And this is why if we look and discuss as we go to the uh, various objectives, we've looked at not only HIV, but HIV as a pathfinder. How do we learn, you know, how do we take the lessons and the tools that we have worked in HIV for the last four decades to improve on many other diseases, comorbidities, infections, et cetera, and also the issue of vaccines and all this. So I'm sure that uh, between all of us as the panelists, we'll be able to do some good justice to this. Let me stop at this point and again thank all the journalists who have keyed in, and I'm sure that we're going to have a great conference, I mean a press conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to, I would like that all the panelists, as Mr. Chair has opened the floor, that the president of the scientific committee to say a short word about uh, the upcoming ICASA and also the work that has been done, how the team has been selected, you know, so that at least the journalists can uh, understand how we come about all the thematic and the objectives. And uh, I want to also inform the journalists that uh, they can go to their icon interpretation, the one that is in French, they can hear the interpretation in French. Je souhaiterais par la présente demander aux journalistes qui sont, qui sont pas bilingues, ils peuvent aller à, à y a, y a un, y a l'icône interprétation en bas de votre truc, vous pouvez Vous pouvez cliquer dessus, vous allez voir français, anglais, vous choisissez la langue qui, qui vous sera la plus accessible pour faciliter la, la conférence de presse. Merci bien. Je te dis, je demandais au président du comité scientifique de bien vouloir s'introduire et de pouvoir nous parler un peu de comment on est arrivé aux thématiques du CASA 2021 ici présent. Merci bien. Professeur Lavier, vous avez la parole. Merci. Oui, yes, uh, thank you, Luc. I first of all uh, would like to thank uh, the president, and then the panelists as well, and also say that I'm happy to take any question in English or French. Oh, that's great. Talking about the scientific committee, I want to say that we are so humble uh, to be chairing a group of very talented people. And just to say that, to, to insist on the fact that we have uh, in the scientific uh, committee, uh, a five track. First, we'll be talking about the basic science on HIV pathogenesis. We can come to that later. Each track has a chair and committee members who are expert, who are expert in the field. So the basic science track is chaired by Professor Samuel Elias Kuyaya. The clinical science and treatment and care by Professor Tano. The epidemiology and prevention science is chaired by Professor Mohamed Shakrun. Then law and human rights, social and political science is chaired by Dr. Marsha Martin. And finally, uh, the health system, economic and implementation science by Professor Morenike Okpan. Uh, to give a quick overview uh, of the different tracks, I will just mention that Basically, in track A, we'll be talking about the fundamental biology and the host response, looking at the viral diversity, looking at the immunological response, the transmission pathogenesis, the genetics of the infections, the way we could develop drugs or understand development of drug resistance. We'll be talking about the vaccines development, the interactions between 
HIV, another infection, of course. There is, there will be sessions on COVID-19, as the president just said, the way it will be impacting the HIV transmission dynamics. And now again, we'll be talking about the HIV viralities. So track B will be focusing on the clinical on the treatment, clinical science and treatment care. Looking at the cause of infections, the interactions between, between co-infections, comorbidities, we'll be talking about HIV and non-communicable diseases, the antiretroviral therapies, the palliative case, and COVID again. And the track C will be looking at epidemiology and prevention science. This track will focus on HIV and AIDS prevention research and HIV related implementation and evaluations, looking at programs and how to reach the SDD goals. And, and then uh, we'll be looking at in the final track, we'll be talking, about, no, in track D, we'll be talking about law, human rights, social science, and political science. We all know the interactions between the HIV pandemics and the politics. This tract will be looking, will be highlighting the knowledge and address the gaps in the translation of behavioral and social science evidence and practices. And we'll also try in this tract to promote the understanding of the individual and social determinants of HIV related risk. Then briefly, finally, we'll be, we'll be looking at health system, health economics and implementation science. So the track will focus on providing insight into the status of health system in the capacity and challenges on how to expand the treatment. Just to close in this stage, I just want to say uh, to the panelists that we're already, we already lucky to say that we already have online some very talented and distinguished speakers, some renowned people who are willing to be part of this endeavor. So that is where, Luc, I can just stop here at this stage. And I'm happy to provide any further details or comment, either in English or French. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair of the Scientific Committee. Now, let me introduce to you the last panelist, Dr. Pari, Honorable Pari from Zimbabwe, who is the chair of the leadership committee. Sa, can you briefly explain to us how we come to the thematic of ICASA, the thematic of ICASA, and also the objective? Thank you, Dr. Paria. Hello, Dr. Pari, are you there? Hello, Dr. Pari, are you there? It seems that Dr. Pari is not there. I can see his name, but maybe he has problem with the internet. Hello, Dr. Pari, let me contact him. I guess he's having problem with his internet. Yes. Hello, Dr. Pari, are you there? Can you hear us? Uh oh, he's on mute. Can you unmute your, your can you unmute your, your microphone, Dr. Pari? Let me contact. Mr. President. I think we can continue. Yes, we can continue. Uh, Doctor, can you take over from Dr. Parry just to explain how we come out, how we have the thematic, the, the theme of ICASA and also the objective has been validated, then we take the question from the journalist. Hello, Prof. Doko, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, say it again. Sorry, I didn't get you. Yes, I said that, uh, can you take us through how 
the thematic of ICASA has been validated and how we were able to come out with that objective so that we can now allow the journalists to ask some questions. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, uh, just like uh, Professor Xavier uh, just uh, described, the leadership uh, team has been very important. And uh, you, we know that uh, political leadership, leadership at the level of community, at the level of science is a critical component. So this group, again, had quite a number of objectives. They walked through them. Uh, they walked through these objectives and uh, they were able to find five main objectives. Luke, can you, can you put up the objectives for, for me, please? Yes, sir. The objectives of the leadership group, which I think we can just run through. Yes, I think it's, these are uh -huh. the objectives, because this, the objectives are there. The final objectives are there. We can just go for it directly. Because okay, all fine. Groups, yes. Okay, so, uh, well, so I wanted to look at the leadership and then how it is, you know, but these are the final objectives. After we had uh, uh, looked at all the objectives from the scientific, the community and the leadership, we now had to be able to discuss in our various uh, uh, sessions to see which were the appropriate from the initial objectives that were proposed by each object by each committee. Then we came together in one or in two plenaries to be able to discuss, fine tune, and then get the objectives which will tailor to the validated team, which is AIDS, Africa AIDS response, the race to 2030 evidence scale up and accelerate. And as you can see, just like I mentioned initially and uh, the uh, presentation from Professor Xavier, this is like being strategic. Where, where are we coming from? Where are we and how do we get to 2030? And then looking at all the various other components that become very important. Sir, your internet is having uh, some issue. We can't hear you. Hello? Prof. Doko? Okay. As Prof. Doko is having some issue, let me take over from here. You know, like this. Okay. Hello, Prof. You were caught. Hello, Prof. As Prof is coming back, uh, let me just briefly explain to you that uh, it's the first time that ICASA will be virtual this year. Why virtual? Because uh, ICASA will be this year an hybrid meeting. We, we give the possibility of participants to be whether virtual or whether in person. And it is the first time that uh, the conference is going hybrid in 2021. And it will also allow us to bring more people who do not have the capacity or the, the means, you know, to attend. Okay, look, look, I'm back. Hello, Prof, you are back? Okay. Yes, no, I'm you back. Know. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, I didn't come in. Call. So we have yes. five objectives that are really related to our team. The first of it is to strengthen health systems, to integrate high impact interventions on comorbidities, emerging infections, and SCDs. COVID has shown us how frail and how fragile all our health systems are on the continent. The second very important objective is to build, strengthen, and invest in Africa's scientific capacity and manufacturing of vaccines, diagnostics, and therapeutics. That's also a key thing. You all know how we're all scrambling for vaccines now for, for COVID. And then the third very important uh, um, objective is to identify in Africa resource-tailored interventions for populations most affected including women, children, adolescents, men, and key populations. And the fourth objective is to evaluate the impact of COVID-19 on HIV AIDS response and share lessons learned in overcoming barriers in maintaining continuity or care for people living with 
and at risk of HIV infection. And to amplify national, regional, continental, and global integration to reach epidemic control in Africa and contributions from Africa in the diaspora. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dr. Paratria, are you back? Can you emit your phone? Can you emit your microphone? Can you emit your microphone? Okay. Right. Please. Yes, you, you want me? Yes. Can you take over? You want me to speak on the leadership? Exactly on the leadership, yes. Just uh, two minutes so that we move on to the question and answer. Thank you very much, uh, Luke. Let me just uh, uh, acknowledge the President, uh, Professor Idogo, and uh, all you. the other members of the committee, plus Thank our you. journalists and uh, people from the media. We are very excited by the conference that's going to happen in Durban. And leadership, as you know, is a very, very key component of fighting HIV and AIDS, and also to try and make sure that we don't become complacent in the fight against HIV. And leadership doesn't mean the political leadership alone. It means all leaders in all strata, including in business, including uh, at universities, including in the communities. And those particular objectives that have been put up are quite clearly going to boost the fight against HIV when we discuss this issue at our next conference in Ikasa, uh, which will be virtual and also uh, perhaps how virtual and how physical. So I'm quite excited that what the professor has enunciated as the objectives pertain also to leadership. So as journalists and as media, you can pick up on any one of those objectives and reflect it in, in as far as how does it affect leadership or how does leadership impact on five of those very key objectives. I think with those few words, we are really keen, would like all the people, including you yourselves, you are really part of leadership. You've got any ideas, you can feed them into our committee so that it is reflected in some of the plenary sessions that will be put up during ICASA. Those few words, uh, 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 look, I think I want to end it there. Thank you so much, Dr. Parry. We really appreciate uh, your intervention. Now, I will ask uh, Mr. Chair, we can open the floor for the journalists. Yes, thank you very much, Luke. The floor is open for questions. Si vous avez n'importe quelle question par rapport à l'intervention du président de la conférence, du président du comité scientifique, du président du comité de leadership, je vous en prie, n'hésitez pas. Levez la main et puis on va commencer. Je vous en prie. Merci. Ok. Marie-Raphaël. D'accord. Euh, Est-ce que vous me suivez? Oui, on vous suit très bien. D'accord. Quelles sont, les, quelles sont les statistiques des cas d'infection et de décès du VIH en Afrique comparé aux statistiques des années antérieures? Ok. Ça, c'est pour le professeur Xavier. But can you interpret it, look, so that... Uh, yes. I can still say it in English, but you have to answer in French. Marie but you have to answer in French. Yes, yeah, no, no problem. I'm not going to answer. Can Zambi is going to answer in French. We have to answer in French. What are the statistics? What are the statistics of the infected cases of uh, HIV AIDS in Africa compared to latest years? Is there any evolution, and how can you like? How can you illustrate it? How can we notice that? In Africa, compared to where? No, compared to the preceding years, the past years. Oh, okay, the evolution, okay. the statistic of the of the of the virus, like how is it affecting people now compared to the past years? Okay, okay, okay. Be, be we we like that okay. Professor Davier can respond to that. He's the chair of the project. Yes. The uh, well, by the way, she wants me to she wants me to respond in French. Yes. So that's, you, no. you will excuse me can if I, I can respond can I in French. I make a point. Point of observation. Yes, I okay. make a point. For the journalists also ask, and we note it, and then the panelists will answer. Otherwise, yes. Okay, that's good. Then, 
Okay, so, we take that note. Then we, we take uh, we take Mr. Madam Dursley. Yes. Mr. So first one, Mary goes to Xavier. <laughs> yes. Okay. Madame Dursley, vous avez la parole. Ah, d'accord. Merci. Euh, je voudrais poser la question au, au président de, de l'ICASA pour savoir aujourd'hui, après, après la conférence de la dernière conférence en, au Rwanda, est-ce qu'on peut déjà évaluer, est-ce qu'on peut évaluer les avancées ou la mise en œuvre des résolutions qui avaient été prises à Kigali C'est ma première préoccupation. Laissez-moi interpréter ça. La, la seconde préoccupation, c'est de savoir aujourd'hui, est-ce qu'on a déjà fait un lien, un lien direct entre les personnes vivant avec le VIH et les personnes atteintes par le COVID. Est-ce qu'il y a un rapport entre les deux? Si oui, quel serait euh, l'impact du VIH sur une personne atteinte de COVID-19, par exemple? Merci. Thank you. Mr. Chair, you yes, are able to, to listen to the translation in French, in English? Yes, please, can you do the translation? I had 10% of it. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, the translation, if you want to hear the translation, you can click in interpretation there, down there on your computer, and you will see French and English, and you select one. Well, let me take over yeah, this no, one. You have to interpret you. this for me now. Okay. What, is, what is, she's asking is the impact, the impact of the past ICASA. Were we, we, were we, able, to, were we able to evaluate the impact of the past ICASA, you know, since we finished ICASA in uh, Kigali, what is the impact? You know, in the fight against HIV, that's one. Two, the second question is uh, people who are living with HIV having COVID, what is the impact on COVID on people living with HIV? That's the two questions that she asked. Okay, great. I cannot see any other hand, but let me take these two. Professor Xavier, can you respond to Madame Marie? Hello, Professor Xavier? Yes. You have your floor. Can you respond to Madame Marie? Uh, let me. Uh, C'est Madame Marie Noël? Oui. Voilà, Madame Marie Noël, d'abord, j'aimerais remercier mon ami Constant Nemale qui a bien voulu uh, que vous puissiez, Africa 24, participer à cette conférence de presse. Je connais votre soutien. Euh, à la lutte contre la pandémie sur le continent. Voilà, vous me posez la question de savoir, euh, j'ai bien compris, c'est vos questions est en relation avec euh, les nombres des décès et puis s'il y a eu évolution en Afrique par rapport aux années antérieures. Oui, exactement. Exactement. D'abord, euh, vous avez la chance de me voir parce que je fais partie à la fois du stack de l'ONU-SIDA donc, c'est nous qui compilons les chiffres et évaluons les politiques de santé en matière de VIH. Pour vous dire que les statistiques se font généralement au mois de décembre, c'est-à-dire que les chiffres que nous avons, par exemple, c'est en décembre, par exemple, 2000, 2020, qu'on a les chiffres de 2019, et ainsi de suite. Sur le continent, avec, il est important quand même de dire qu'avec environ 30 000 millions de personnes infectées par le VIH, l'Afrique compte autour de 15,3 millions de personnes infectées et quand, on parlait, mm -hmm. et quand on parlait de 690 000 décès liés au VIH, nous sommes à, 105, à 135 000 décès liés au VIH. Les chiffres changent très légèrement, quasiment, ils sont quasiment stables parce que ce sont les pays qui envoient des chiffres, qui font des déclarations qui sont compilées. Donc, si l'on s'en tient aux chiffres de l'année dernière, puisque c'est de ça qu'on va parler aujourd'hui, nous sommes autour de 35 000 personnes, 35 000 décès liés au VIH euh, sur le continent. Nous avons 15,3 millions de personnes infectées par le VIH en Afrique. Je peux aussi vous donner, on a environ 105 000 nouvelles infections. Je parle de l'Afrique, puisque c'est ça qui vous intéresse. 105 000 nouvelles infections, 135 000 décès liés au VIH. Donc, j'espère que j'ai répondu à vos questions. OK. 
Thank you so much, uh, Professor Xavier. I would like to have, uh, now we need to answer the question from Professor, from uh, Josely, from the, Mr. President. You may the question okay. was addressed to you. Yes, thank you very much. And I think the question was looking at, uh, one, the evaluation, I'm sorry, the, yes, evaluation of the impact of the last ICARSA. Exactly. Uh, uh, yes, on, on uh, the last ICARSA, on several things, HIV, AIDS, and all related yes. diseases. Yes, and that's the first question. The second question is, uh, people living in HIV and having COVID, what is the... the Yes. So let me start. Let me start with the first one. Uh, I will start with the evaluation of the conference, which I think was important, and I think that we have data for this. Uh, that more than ninety percent of the people who came to the conference applauded that it was very sound, particularly the science, and that they were going to take the lessons from their home to their various home countries. Because we looked not only at HIV, we looked at co-infections. We looked at comorbidities and we looked at emerging infections and even appraising what happens to uh, epidemic, you know, uh, uh, epidemic uh, uh, appraisal and uh, how to react to ensuring that uh, you meet a new epidemic. These were all things we had discussed. Uh, as you well know, this uh, conference happened at the December. Uh, 2019. And shortly after we left there, you know, COVID uh, came up and started spreading around the world and including Africa. So in terms of our, our SAR actually evaluating various, uh, in various countries, impacts of what that last um, um, conference did, we, have, we don't have data. But there is anecdotal data. What is the anecdotal data? First, we looked at uh, uh, our partners that do accountability for us, not only at, at country level, to look at how much each country is putting money into HIV AIDS. And we extended this to COVID and brought it to the attention of the countries because it became now important for them to address the two. The second aspect of it, I don't have data from other countries, but I have data from Nigeria to show that one of the things that many of the organizations did was to take the tools and the lessons learned from HIV to expand their work during the HIV to even COVID. For example, people were on the road testing for HIV, TB, and COVID. And this identified for, for them I have data for this from Nigeria and it may be a few other countries, uh, you know, to show that some of the things that they have grabbed from this uh, uh, conference has helped, you know, not only in HIV, but also in this new emerging disease. So that's, that's the point I can make. As to whether, what is the uh, impact of uh, COVID on people living with HIV AIDS? Very interesting question. Initially, looking at the immunopathology of, of HIV, of, of COVID, people thought that, well, if it is a storm that causes all the problems at the level of, you know, the alveoli the membrane, that because people with HIV have low immunity, they will not respond to it. This was the initial thing. But we now know from large series that people who have HIV have adverse effects as far as COVID is concerned that COVID actually affects them a lot more. And it's not surprising because we now know that H yeah, COVID is not a disease of the lungs alone. That COVID is a systemic disease. So it affects, you know, it affects your, the, the various parts of the body from your cardiovascular system to your gastrointestinal, to your renal, to your, you know, to the brain, et cetera. So to summarize, we now know that people who have HIV, have a more deleterious effect, a more severe effect, you know, if, when, when they catch COVID. Look. Look. Thank I you, Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh -huh. I also want to inform uh, 
Jocelyn, that he, she can go to SAR website, she, she can also assess the evaluation of the Pasi Casa. It will help her also a lot, you know. We have okay. our website, the SAR website is www.sarafrica.org. You will see the full evaluation of ICASA 20, 20, 20, 20, 2017 there, 2019 okay. there. It can help you a lot. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, it seems uh, that uh, Dr. Parry mm -hmm. wanted to add something. Oh, yes, I, I, I think. Oh, it's, it's I, I, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can hear you, now. Dr. Pari. Right, I think it is very interesting, this question on HIV. COVID, COVID impacting on HIV. It is, it is quite, mm -hmm interesting that a lot of people are actually saying because i'm hiv positive i do not want to for example to be vaccinated and we are now aware like what the professor has just said that in fact people who are hiv positive people who are diabetic people who have got cancer are very very vulnerable to covid 19 and they are the people who actually should be vaccinated if should the vaccine come their way and this is going to be a very interesting point as long as they are well stabilized, they should be getting the vaccine, appropriate vaccine uh, for their, for their in, in, in spite of their condition, whether it's diabetes, hypertension, cancer, or HIV. So I think let's look at it that way, that um, the coming of the vaccine is going to be a relief to a lot of people. And I think it's something that we should, as, as, a, as a continent, try to embrace. Uh, thank you, Luke. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Parry, for adding that supplement. <laughs> yes, there is also also David who want to add something. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, thank you, Luke. I just wanted to stress on the fact that uh, HIV and COVID and COVID-19 is clearly a deadly synergy. Yeah. We have evidence today that HIV raises the risk, uh, raises the risk of death uh, from COVID-19 that we have some ongoing papers and some already published in the Lancet. So this is clear. About 8% of, uh, of the death related to COVID are linked to HIV infections. Those are ongoing data that we have. So clearly, this clearly, this clearly emphasizes the need of addressing, of addressing the relationship between HIV between COVID-19 and HIV pandemics uh, in Africa. This is what I can say about this, uh, Luke. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair of the Scientific Committee. There is one question from uh, Cedric. I want to read the question for you. He says, Où en est-on avec la recherche du vaccin contre le sida en Afrique? Depuis la surveillance du COVID, quel est l'impact de cette crise sanitaire sur la prise en charge des patients atteints du VIH. C'est pour le professeur Xavier. Oui, euh, peut-être comme, euh, comme Cédric euh, m'entend, euh, je vais peut-être le... Vous voulez que je réponde en français? Oui, la, la réponse a été posée, la question a été posée en français. Voilà. Euh, J'aimerais dire à, à Cédric d'abord, parlant, euh, parlant du vaccin du VIH. C'est vrai qu'on euh, pourrait euh, très peu... Euh, très peu de travaux en Afrique se sont focalisés sur le vaccin pour la simple raison qu'il euh, y a eu, bon, nous allons partir de, de, de beaucoup de paramètres, il y a très peu, peu d'investissements en, en général euh, sur la santé en Afrique. Ça, il ne faut pas se leurrer. Il faut pas se leurrer. Et voilà pourquoi c'est une question importante à adresser à, à, à ICASA. Quand on sait, par exemple, que sur les 53 pays africains, moins de... Il y a environ moins de 15 euh, consacre euh, moins de 15 consacre les, les 15 de leur budget de santé. Euh, cinq, euh, cinq, 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 cinq pays seulement. Cinq pays seulement consacrent les 15 euh, de leur budget à la santé. Je n'aimerais même pas parler euh, du reste qui ne consacre quasiment rien. Donc ça c'est quelque chose d'important. La deuxième chose c'est que la plupart des laboratoires sur le continent africain comptent sur des ressources extérieures. Et la troisième chose, c'est qu'il n'y a pas une dynamique vraiment de regroupement des efforts en Afrique, tout au moins formelle, parce que sur le plan informel, les chercheurs collaborent entre eux, 
Mais il est important que l'on ait une dynamique euh, transversale sur le continent. Et c'est la chance peut-être d'évoquer le rôle de Africa CDC, euh, qui, je l'espère, déjà joue ce rôle, ce rôle pionnier avec John Kengason de go-between entre les pays africains. Et on voit, on voit l'impact que le rôle d'Africa CDC avec d'autres partenaires a déjà sur le continent. Je, je le dis là pour m'arrêter là, pour dire qu'il y, qu y a beaucoup de paramètres. Et enfin, j'aimerais insister ici, le très peu de ressources, naturellement, non seulement à la santé, même à la recherche dans les pays africains. Ça, c'est vrai. Donc, les laboratoires africains sont obligés de passer le temps à compétir pour des grands étrangers, alors que leur pays pouvait consacrer une somme d'argent importante pour des recherches menées sur leur propre sol. Donc ça, c'est quelque ça, chose d'important. Voilà. Thank Maintenant, you so much. can you come back on, on that uh, uh, question in English? In English. Yes, so yes. that uh, other people also can have access. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I uh, thank you, Luke. I, I just wanted because my friend Cedric was asking why. Uh, You see, the state of the vaccine, HIV vaccine research in Africa. I, I was trying to stress on some, on some, on, on some key points. First, only five countries out of the African countries, out of around 50-something countries, can really have at least the 15% of their budget related to, to health, related issues. And that is quite sad, because if you see this percentage, we understand why we don't have progress in the continent on vaccines issues. And secondly, we don't have a formal collaboration between uh, African research centers of Africa centers of expertise. Let's just tell you, for instance, I'm talking on a, on a university standpoint. Do you think, that, can you believe that I have to call colleagues either in Senegal or in Nigeria to sequence some samples from my laboratory because there's no link between government officials. This is critical. We need clearly to have a South-South collaboration. And we are lucky at this point to have, uh, to, I think we can applaud the role played by African CDC today in the COVID standpoint, trying to get African countries together, trying to mutualize our resources to achieve better results. So, So having said this, I believe that at the political levels, our leaders should, should first have concentrated more resources on health-related issues, especially uh, some uh, the critical issues like the vaccines candidates that we need, that we urgently need in Africa. Secondly, we should mutualize our effort to have uh, what I would call Uh, some uh, centers of excellence for the continent where we can have the capacity to, uh, to tackle those diseases uh, that are plaguing man in our continent. And then finally, I believe that in this regard, we as a community to reinforce this, we should voice this again and again at ICASA. And it is occasion, Luke, to say that, to remind the audience that ICASA conference is the premier conference on infectious disease in the continent. And it is the most respected uh, conference uh, taking place in Africa over the world. So yes, I sir. think those critical issues will be part Thank you of so the much. discussions. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair of the Scientific Committee. In fact, it's part on ready. ICASA 2021 yes. is showing case, go to the, the journalists to check On, the, on their screen, they will see that uh, we have uh, in the objective two to build, strengthen, and invest in Africa's scientist capacity and manufacturing of vaccines, diagnostic, and therapeutics. That one address completely the question of Cedric. That answer is supposed to come to ICASA and check The answer is at ICASA 2021, you know, so that we can take it up and spread the news in Africa. We, as a conference, ICASA 2021, we believe that uh, it will be a breakthrough for Africa. You hear from the president of the, 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 the scientific committee, you hear from the president of ICASA, you hear from the president of the, of the leadership committee, and I, we believe that uh, 
you alone is a voice can, that can help us, you know, to pass the bridge, you know, so that uh, people will hear what is going on on the continent. Mr. Then, uh, Luke. Yes. Luke. Hello. Me? Yes, look, uh, I, I will answer quickly the second part of uh, Cedric's question. Okay. He was asking uh, how, uh, how uh, COVID is impacting on uh, HIV treatment. Exactly. Uh, again, yes, I'll just say quickly, I just did the case of Cameroon. We, have, we are handling COVID in our, hosp in our hospitals. It is the same human resources we have for HIV that is handling COVID. So you understand why the shortage in human resources is clearly affecting, you see, uh, the HIV treatment and care. I'm taking the care of Cameroon. The same instance in charge of HIV infectious diseases are also the one handling COVID. So you understand why the shortage in human resources is clearly affecting uh, the treatment of those uh, living with HIV. So um, I want to take, make a bridge with what uh, President Idoko just said. But the advantage is that we are using all the experience gathered in HIV, in HIV treatment and follow-up. For instance, and Segrik knows that very well, the idea of the mass testing of people uh, for COVID is really pending on, on the resources we have for HIV. And all those uh, taking part in the HIV chain are the one handling COVID in the field. So you understand why it is at the same time an opportunity and again for us to have to make sure that the funds we have available for COVID also help HIV treatment and care. So Great. I don't know if I clearly um, if I have, if I clearly answer the question, but I think this is what I wanted to say. But what we are actually doing clearly is to make sure that we we direct our resources for COVID on HIV treatment as well. Mm. Not only because of what we've explained earlier, the deadly synergy between the two infections, but just because we believe that uh, it is uh, HIV treatment and care is at the central uh, of our main objectives in the field. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is very great. Lesson learned from HIV. HIV is helping COVID management. This is very important that we, we should learn from the past. Mr. Chair, you have the floor, President Idoko. Yes, so what else, what's the next thing on the agenda? No, there's no next thing on the agenda, there's question and answer. So it remains for me to do a vote of thanks. Okay, sir. So let me really thank, I'll start from the journalists and the media people. We thank you so much. The questions were really very, very brilliant. Uh, we, some of us who, whose brains are also decaying, if we didn't answer them very well, please pardon us. <laughs> but we thank you very much. It was a very lively uh, uh, press conference. And of course, to our panelists, I'm really, really grateful to all of you. Uh, you can see that even from this, we have learned so much from ourselves. And then of course, Look who has anchored everything. We can't thank you enough. Um, we look forward to uh, the media people really spreading our message and spreading the gospel that look, this next Ikasa will be better than the last one. And you can see, we have wrapped up all the main issues that is the big problems for Africa. Now, we're looking at HIV, we're looking at COVID, we're looking at co-infections, we're looking at comorbidities and like uh, Professor Xavier said, and uh, Dr. Parry, the issue of political uh, commitment became, becomes a very, very serious thing. And the issue of vaccine, it will continue to be very topical. There's no reason why Africa cannot develop capacity to manufacture vaccines, drugs, and, uh, and diagnostics. All these things are no longer rocket science. And then, of course, I'm very also happy that one of the last objectives is how we can connect with our diaspora. That is how India and China became what they are today. So I think we must put all this at the back of our mind uh, <coughs> to move on, you know, and you, the media men and women, please.
Hello, Mr. President. We've lost the president. We lost the president. Okay. Nick. Okay. Let me Please help us. Thank all of you. We live, okay, we Mr. President. Back. He's a okay. huge success. Back. Okay, Mr. President, we love you. No, I'm here. Okay. Thank yes. you so much for wrapping up. Let me tell the journalists that uh, to attend ICASA for journalists is free. They can go to our platform and send you the, the, the email address. Also, the website is completely free for journalists. And if they need uh, other questions, they don't hesitate to call us directly or to send us an email so that we can respond to them. Technically, ICASA will be an hybrid meeting. We are expecting a minimum of 10,000 delegates this year because uh, we believe that we have up to 8,000 delegates uh, in virtual and we have uh, 2,000 delegates in person. And these 2,000 delegates in person, we follow strictly the COVID protocol, the, 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 the management of the COVID <coughs> protocol. That's why we are expecting 2,000 in person. And uh, out that, uh, outside of that, uh, you have to also understand that uh, ICASA 2021 will be hosted in Durban this year, 6 to 11 December 2021. Thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your, your, uh, your, your valuable question. And we believe that, uh, as the president said, you will, you, will, you will go ahead to proclaim the gospel to all Africa and to all nations. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Oui, Xavier. Oui, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, Luke. Uh, I think I think there is also. I wanted to give. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We are hearing. Yes, yes. I was trying. You know that. I was trying to give uh, to to cheese a bit about journalists with two okay. things. I will try. Uh, let me try to cheese the journalists in two things. Okay. Uh, is is the president Johnny Doko is still around? Yes, he's yes, still around. Still around. Yes, yes uh, President Johnny Doko, I received last night the call of, of Marisol Touraine, President of Unite, yes. former French minister and everything. Yes. Begging to be part of the conference. Wow. Begging to be part of the conference. She called me wow. directly. So she's a very, as you know very well, she's the Deputy Secretary General of the UN. Yeah. So she, and she dog. told me, and she told me she will come with a team and she's willing to take part fully in the conference. So wow. you understand what I mean? Yes. You understand fully. what I mean? And then she is also the one leading uh, uh, the European uh, research missions on infectious diseases and COVID and everything. So, she, so in her capacity, she will be representing the French government, the European Commission, and UNITE. Wow, that's so great. So this is powerful. And secondly... At the African level, uh, I also had a call from John Kengason that you know very well. Yes. Africa CDC. So they are willing yes. to be part of this. So this is good for the journalists. And then second thing I wanted to say is that I expect my fellow journalists to start spreading the, to start spread, spreading the good news from Monday, from Monday oh, over the press. So I count on Cedric. I count on Africa uh, Venkat. And I also count on Jocelyn to have Cameroon Tribune start spreading from Monday uh, the minutes of this press conference. Thank you. Thank Great. You. Well said. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This is the flavor of some speakers that are that, 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 that will be online. attending the, the meeting. You just have the flavor from the, the, the chair of the, the scientific committee. And we hope that uh, we will not take it for granted because we have more than that at Picasa. Thank you so much for your time and your valuable time. And let Luke, me look forward a, to engage you. Hello? Luke, oui. there, is a, there was a, a hand up from uh, Africa Venkat. Yeah. Africa Venkat, we just finished one hour. It's one hour maximum. <laughs> okay. I just had a last question to ask. I don't know if it's still possible. Yes, it's possible. I... The last question, just go ahead. Okay. 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 Je, souhaite hour, savoir, yeah. oui. Je souhaite savoir quel effort est-ce que le comité scientifique et que ça fait pour amener les autorités à promouvoir la production des médicaments sur leur territoire. 
Mmh. Bon. <rire> euh, J'aimerais bien qu'on réponde à cette question-là, mais monsieur le, le, le président du comité scientifique, professeur Xavier. Oui, euh, j'aimerais le dire, j'aimerais dire rapidement ceci. Parce que, parce que ICASA est la première conférence sur le continent et parce que ICASA regroupe des gens tellement importants, que ce soit l'OMS, l'Unité et tous ces gens-là, et parce que à ICASA participent tous les ministères de la Santé publique, nous pensons que c'est un forum important pour un plaidoyer pour euh, la mise en place des stratégies de développement des, des vaccins, des médicaments en Afrique. Et parce que nous faisons partie de l'Union africaine, vous savez qu'il y a une réponse coordonnée au niveau de l'Union africaine. Donc, voilà comment ICASA peut être le go-between entre les gouvernements et une lutte coordonnée sur le continent. Voilà ce que j'aimerais dire à ce stade. Oui, tout à fait, professeur. Et vraiment, il faudrait que vous puissiez assister à la conférence ICASA pour voir la plateforme du plaidoyer et le niveau du plaidoyer que nous amenons à l'Afrique. C'est un plaidoyer de leadership très élevé et j'espère très bien que vous recevrez des notes. Thank you so much. On that note, we thank all the panelists, all the journalists that attended this meeting and we hope that uh, the, next meet, the next meeting will have you more and you will follow us during the implementation of this ICASA 2021. If you have any more questions, please send it to us via email so that we can address it. Thank you, too. Thank you and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye to everyone. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, Mr. Chair, thank Mr. You, President. Xavier. And thank you all the other panelists and the media men and women. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Gosh.